Hey family, thank you for tuning in to Our Roots Podcast with Joseph Babaifa. Thank you so much. And today, um, if you haven't had the opportunity, please be sure to tap on that subscribe button as well as share this video. Um, the podcast where only the strongest roots see the light. And our first episode today is going to be on Isheshe, right? And we're going to be interviewing possibly the most recognizable and notable man within Ifa. He has credentials that span decades, that include degrees, titles, and also the presidency of the International Council for the Ifa Religion. I'd like everybody to please join me in welcoming Chief Sholaba de Popola. Thank you very much. Baba, thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure, to say the least. Um, the gentleman to my right. If you've seen Baba, you've definitely seen him. Definitely. Definitely, right? The right hand, uh, Mr. Jose Rodriguez Abola. Abola. Thank yeah. you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. And making this all a possibility. Um, gentlemen, the focus of today's conversation is going to be Sheshe, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And we really want to focus on what people should know, not only entering Ifa, but entering this specific space, because now as Ifa has progressed throughout the world, mm -hmm. different ways of practice, it's expanded in different places. Mm -hmm. And um, we basically want to start the conversation by asking you, Baba, what do you think people should know before practicing Ifa? Um, <clears throat> if you are looking for the truth, that is where you go to, you go to Ifa. Yes, sir. That is where you get the truth, because the definition of Ifa is truth. That is what Ifa says in Osa Otura, that Ifa is the truth. Because the truth is what Olodumare uses in founding the world. The truth is what Olodumare uses in administering the world. The truth is what is indestructible. The truth is what doesn't change. And Ifa is the truth. So if you want to hear the truth, if you want to know the truth, then go to Ifa. That is where you'll find it. And if you are thinking in terms of financial gain, um, wealth, success, and uh, so forth, you don't necessarily need to go to Ifa. You can get all of those ones elsewhere. Because Ifa is talking about peace of mind. <coughs> the wealth that Ifa is talking about is within, not outside. If I is not interested in how many cars you have acquired, if I is not interested in how many properties you have, if I is not interested in how many places you have been to, do you have a private jet that you can that can move you from one place to the other? No, that's not what if I is interested in. And if I does not even consider all those as wealth, if I says that wealth is what can you do? to make somebody who is supposed to cry smile. That is sure. wealth. Sure. The first says that wealth is when you make this world better than the way you have met it, then you are a wealthy person. One of the greatest Babala that had ever lived, that I know, was called Aladikun. When he died, he had only five dresses. And he considered himself a very wealthy man. You see, the mm. perspective is different because he could point to so many people that he had made great, so many people that he had elevated, not necessarily financially, but people who are supposed to be homeless that he had tried to work on Ifa, and those people are proud owners of their various homes. Those who are supposed to be uh, 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 to be barren and they are proud mothers and uh, fathers. Those are the people that he consider as part of his resources, his wealth. And I think that is what wealth is all about. How you impart on the people and you make them happy, you make them change from desperation to hope is very important. And that is what I consider to be the first thing that you need to think of before you come to Ifa. Where do I get the truth? Then you know it is Ifa. Where can my life change from hopelessness to hopefulness? You know it is Ifa. Where can 
I be empowered. What can give me power? Financial, spiritual, ethical, uh, psychological, and uh, physical power. Then you notice in Ifa. There is a lot of energy in Ifa that you can tap into and make use of it. It's like this book that I wrote, it's a small pamphlet, the one that we call Divine Possibilities. Yeah. You can see all of these things there. Yes, yes. That is fun. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Baba, based on your experience, being that obviously your whole life practicing Isheshe, and now you know blessing us in the new world with all the knowledge that you bring from there and experiencing the Lukumi Afro-Cuban practice, um, what do you think are the biggest differences between us? I think the differences have to do with experience, exposure. How does Ifa come into the diaspora? Yes, sir. That is the difference that I have seen. Ifa is Ifa. Ogu is Ogu. Shango is Shango. Obatala is Obatala. Orishaoko is Orishaoko. Whether it is Lukumi or Santeria or Kadamble or Ubanda or traditional, it is the same. When we will mention Shango, it is the same Shango <coughs> that comes to mind. But the way you see it may be different. And you know, even when we mention Shango, Shango does not have only one path. Oh. It has several paths. And there was a time that I wrote about eight parts of Oshun. Oshun has more than eight parts. But I had to limit it to eight paths. That is it. Everything depends on which path you have decided to follow. Whichever path you follow does not mean that it is wrong if someone else does not follow it. So what you have seen in the diaspora, how did Ifa and Orisha come into the diaspora? It come from the oppressed people of the world. Then you will expect them that they need to have a survival mechanism that will make them to be able to practice what they have without being persecuted for that. So that is why we find some of the changes, some of the additions and subtractions that we that we find in Eva. That is the way we find it there. And with uh, the traditional, for example, in the diaspora, we realize that people start with initiation first. Yes, sir. And then they now move to studies. In tradition, initiation is our graduation ceremony. Yes, sir. So it means that you do it last. Except if there are some other reasons for you, for Ifa to not tell you, go to, for Ifa's administration immediately mm -hmm. in order to protect your life or in order to preserve something about your life. So I have not seen any changes there. What Ifa will tell you in the Lukumi or in the uh, Kadomble or in the Uganda way is what Ifa will tell you in the traditional way. It, and everything that Ifa will tell you is one do good, avoid evil. That is all. How you are going to do good and avoid evil come from so many branches. But it is do good, avoid evil. Yes, sir. Baba, thank you. Mm. Do you feel, even with these very minute differences, that Ifa has become a world religion? Thank you very much. In 2014, we did what we consider to be if I census, and we got that if I had 180 million devotees listed, listed, yes. Last year, we have if I had 355 million devotees. If I has become the number sixth religion in the world, officially, officially, wow. that is what we have seen. If people do not encounter miracle, if they <coughs> do not encounter the truth that we are talking about, the Otito and Ududu that we are talking about, they will not be coming. And one thing about Ifa is, when you come, you stay. Oh, yes. It is different from other religions that you can go to experiment. And, because Ifa is really not a religion. But it has religious essence. Ifa is not history. It has historical essence. Mm. Ifa is not science. It has historical science. Ifa is not astronomy, mm. but it has astronomical essence. 
If I is not occultism, but it, it has occultic essence. Mm. If I is not economics, but it has economic essence. If I is not medicine, but it has medicinal essence. So if I is a complete way of life. There is nothing you want to talk about that you don't see. In fact, yesterday I was discussing with my friends here, and we were talking about the ethics, the morals. How if I see a person, and how you need to behave, especially when you are in another person's home. All of these things are listed in Ifa. There are certain things that we should expect from you and the most important thing is anytime you go to anybody's home don't overstay your welcome that is all and if I gives you the signs the codes that will make you understand that you are about to overstay your welcome so those are the things that we are talking about if I find something like that of course I want to uh, I want to resonate with it I want to be part of it so that is if I Abola, I had some uh, questions for you. Um, where are you from and where do you reside, my brother? I was born in San Diego, California. Nice. Close to the border to TJ, Tijuana. Nice. Uh, my father was in the military. He was in the Navy for 20 plus years. So he got stationed there, met my mom there. Uh, my dad's originally from um, Santurce in, in Puerto Rico. Okay. And my mom's from Guayaquil, uh, Ecuador. So, But I was born there. I jumped around, went from there to Los Angeles, Phoenix, and now I'm in Rio Grande in Puerto Rico. Awesome. Yep. How were you introduced to Isheshi? I started in San Diego. I started off when I was 18. I started attending uh, San Diego State University. And I started getting kind of like what most of us do that are, are born and raised in the U.S. We like go through the stage. We want to reconnect with our roots. Sure. Right? So I started going through that type of stage and started asking my dad questions about, you know, salsa music at first. And then it went from salsa to like Afro-Cuban music because that's where the roots of the salsa, sure. of salsa is. Yeah. So then I started seeing bata, guido, bembe, and I was like, oh my God, what is this? And I fell in love with the music first. Um, so started taking classes at San Diego State that first semester. They started, uh, it was Latin American music. And it was basically mostly Cuban music, nice. <laughs> Afro-Cuban music. <laughs> Fell in love with it. But then through there, you know, I was like, who's Ele Gua? Who is this you're singing to? And Obatala, and who's this Shango? And so I started asking a lot of questions. And that kind of started me off on the path. And, and back then, there was no internet yet. And so to find information, I went to the library. And there literally was like three or four books. Sure. And that was it. <laughs> uh, I think it was like the Lidia Cabrera, Palomonte book, and yeah, Yoruba like something, and <laughs> so uh, that was it. But then I, that's what got me curious: was the music, the music. Uh, but in San Diego, there wasn't. There was very few like Santeros in San Diego at the time. Um, but it wasn't until I moved to Los Angeles in 2001, 2002, around there. I started attending uh, a temple that was uh, an Ishesha temple, traditional temple in Los Angeles, uh, Araifa Ijorumila, that was headed by uh, Ol Oloye Fashina Falade. Mm -hmm. um, I started attending his classes. I was just super excited. Um, and even though I, I loved the music first, what really hooked me into this Ifa practice was actually the philosophy oh, around nice. it. Um, I've always loved philosophy, and then when I started hearing, which was what he focused on the most, uh, it just hooked me. It hooked me, hooked me, and then I was like, this is a great balance of like music that I love, and then all this philosophy, philosophy that he's teaching. Um, so I started there, um, and it's funny because Fashina is actually one that eventually ended up connecting me with, with Chief Popola. He was the one who led you to Bawa. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And how was that encounter when you guys first met each other? What uh, was that like? It was in 2000. Four, the first time that I visited him, I was about 28 years old. Nice. Some of that time, uh, I was excited just to go to the continent <laughs> of <laughs> Africa. Wow! Uh, so when I landed, I was like staring out the airplane. I was like, "Oh my God, <laughs> this is great!" 
I was super excited. Any little thing that I saw, I was super excited Amazing. at that time. Yeah. It was like a little kid, yeah. basically. Um, um, but it was, it was great. He was teach. I had all these questions, lists of questions. Of he knows I've always been a preguntón, like just, I love asking questions all the time. And so one of the things I asked him was, what's the Ifa creation story? Because oh. I know the Christian one and the Islamic one is basically kind of the same. Sure, okay. I was like, does Ifa have a creation system? And then he told me this very short version of it. But at that time, my brain was like, it was just exploding. Wow. Uh, and then that just hooked me even more. So when I came back from that trip is when I officially decided this is what I want to practice as my religion, as my tradition. Um, and so that was kind of my journey. And then from there, eventually started studying more with Chief. Uh, it's funny because there was some time period where I would just I'd be asking him questions, but I wasn't really training. Correct. I wasn't in training. It was just me asking questions. Um, until about 2009, maybe 10, is when I said, I want to learn this seriously. And so the, that's when the serious study started happening. And how has the ride been since? How has your experience in Ishesha been? It has been great. <laughs> great, great, great. Um, in the beginning, I, I didn't, when I started getting trained, he was just telling me, go slow, go slow, go slow cast for yourself maybe your family some friends but don't go out and start yeah. casting for people until you at least have a pretty good foundation so while i was living in los angeles i was uh, working as a school psychologist i did not have enough time to study as much as i i could um, because of work so it wasn't until i moved to phoenix arizona in 2014 I left my job, told my wife, I just want to do Ifa. She was like, all right, let's do it. I'll God support. God I'll bless support. that woman. <laughs> that woman for yeah. yeah, for sure. Oh, man. She supported me for uh, about a year and a half because there was no money coming from me whatsoever. She was providing for everything. Uh, I was just kind of basically, I turned into the house husband, basically, okay, I'll clean. I'll wash. Yeah. Take care of the kids. My mother-in-law helped a lot. But I had all this time now throughout the day to study. Beautiful. So washing clothes, okay, I'm reading a book, I'm studying verses, I'm doing this, that, or the other. Um, and I grew so much in that year and a half that eventually in one visit that he came, he started seeing how I was giving messages, and he was like, okay, start. Like, now go out, cast for people. Ashe, you know yeah. saying, that permission to be yes. able to start practicing. And that was basically, he gave me that shit to go start casting. And then I was like, I don't know everything. He's like, it's only a phone call. You don't know something, don't invent it. Call me, and I'll tell you what to do. Uh, and since then, it's just study, 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 study. Never ends. Um, and I thought I was doing pretty good when I first started. Uh, and then he kind of gave me a bigger nudge. And he was like, how many hours a day do you study? And I was like, oh, like two hours. And he was like, do four. <laughs> and I was Hold like, four hours? <laughs> the brain. Feeling it. So I did. I took up the challenge. Uh, but by that time, I had my son already in 2013. My daughter was born in 2016. Oh. So it was even harder now Family to study. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so I was like, how do I put four hours of study with two kids? Got to wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning when yeah. they're asleep. I go to Milan. We got so, wake up early. <laughs> 4 to 6, I'd study. By 6, I'd wake up, get kids ready to school. They're off. Come back. Put two more hours. And then from there, it would be maybe casting a file for someone, yeah. doing someone's ebo. And, and that's kind of been my routine since, yeah, about 2014, 2015, somewhere around there. I tell you, the greatest mentors, the greatest guides are the ones who believe in us when we don't believe in ourselves. You know, yeah. those that take us to that next level. Mm. Yeah. Gentlemen, uh, starting with you, Baba. Are there any restrictions to becoming Baba Lawu in Nigeria and in Isheshe? As far as I'm concerned, there is no restriction. What you need, the biggest credential for you to become a Baba Lawu is determination. Yeah, sure. If you have the determination, then you have the mental equipment 
to cope with what you will get. If you don't have it, or if it is not strong enough, then they can help you out there. That is where we talk of history. We talk of Aronye to build you, to build your memory for you to be able to to move forward. But restrictions, I don't know. The only thing that I can consider to be restriction may be family ties. Oh, yes. When they'll be telling you, no, 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 don't go there. Oh, no, don't what, travel to... Everything, know. that is your determination. And another thing that can really restrict you is if you allow Ifa to intimidate you. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You will not. <laughs> you will not it can get be intimidating that. when you open that book the first time. You start with a jobe. <laughs> you're like, man, this is just the beginning. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly, that is it. Yeah. Because when you know, this guy wrote 20 stanzas in a job. And how do I cope with 20 stanzas in 256 <laughs> ways? Mm -hmm. This guy is going to kill me. Yeah. <laughs> but do you remember that that 20 stanza is nothing? Because a job has 1,680 stanzas. That's the beginning. And then Oyakumeji has the same number of stanzas like that till Ufunche. Uh, so, but if you don't allow it, take it one at a time. That's why I always tell people don't rush. Because mm -hmm. the moment you rush, you get to a state that you will be intimidated. That is mm -hmm. what we are saying. Don't allow it to overwhelm you gradually. When you are in Iwurimeji, don't think of Udi, don't think of Yurusu, don't think of any other. Concentrate on Ijogwe to Iwurimeji only. Because if you leave Ifa for two days, Ifa will leave you for two weeks. Yep. So you need to continue to study every day. I study Ifa every day, up to now. And that's what Ifa says, that Ifa is something that you are going to study until you die. And that a dead person is the beginning of another knowledge. That is pathology. So it means that if you know that you want to be a child of Ifa, Study Ifa every day. Communicate with your father every day. And you will see that a time will come that a pattern will form in your brain where when you want to give message, the first sentence that you will make will be the reason why your client is there. Correct. Yes, you need to get to that. That is when you have connected with the soul and spirit of Ifa. And then the sky is the beginning. I tell you, I've always felt like Oromila is the epitome of kindness. Because mm -hmm. when you look at it, Jobe, I remember there was a verse that says, Oromila, when he was eating the head of the rat or the fish, yes. it had to be little by little. So even yes. from the beginning, he's telling us the same thing you are, that little by little, if not, you choke. Yes. You know, a bone gets stuck, and then we don't get to enjoy all the other beautiful yes. standards that are to come, because there's yes. many. The reason I ask about restrictions, um, in the Lukumi tradition, one of the... Uh, Ideally, prohibitions, right, to becoming Baba Lawu is that the Awo cannot come into trance, like losing consciousness, right? So I ask you, is there any of this phenomenon, <clears throat> any Shesha in Nigeria where the Baba Lawu, you know, comes into trance or, you know, any type of mediumship in that regard? Normally, we don't expect the Baba Lawu to go into trance. Yes, sir. But we have found some Baba Lawu who are heads of other Orisha. For example, the head of Obatala Shrine is a Babalawu. The head of Odudua Grove is Babalawu. Yes. The head of all, many of these things are Babalawus, but it does not remove the fact that they are heads of those Orisha groups. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, even in any Orisha, not all of them go into trance. Yes, sir. So, so to me, it is not a restriction. Okay. It is even a way of laying emphasis on the importance of this uh, Orisha. So it is not a restriction. Understand. If you want to go into trance, you are free. But by the time you know your onions, by the time you <laughs> have really done your research and you have really done your studies, you know you are. When you cast Ifa. You want to hear from Ifa, not from manifestation. Correct. Because you will see that some of the things that you cannot get through manifestation, you get it. Manifestation will give you all the messages, no doubt. But what about the Ebo? What about the Akoshi? Yes. What about the Akunle Ebo? You still need it and you can only get them in Ifa. So that is why I feel that there is no restriction. The only restriction is the one that you give yourself. 
if you cannot study far the way you are supposed to study it, that is the restriction that you are going to get. Mm -hmm. But if you are ready to go all out, there is no restriction. Is it. You know, one of the things that he shared with me, and sorry to, to cut in, oh, well, I, when I asked him that question a long time ago, he was like, Agbola, the more that you immerse yourself in Tuifa, the less that energy will be coming to try mm -hmm. to... Maybe that's to, where that comes from. So it's like you way. delve into it more, mm -hmm. and then it's like Ifa kind of takes over more than the Risha energy. Absolutely. Inside. Mm -hmm. Because where Rumila is, he, he's very, he occupies his space. He doesn't oh, leave yeah. much room. Oh, yes. <laughs> that is it. How much, how much study, Baba, would you like somebody to have before initiating them in Ifa or Risha? Huh? I can assure you of one thing there is no argument about it. If the strictest Ifa studies in Yoruba land today is in the house of Kupola. Because before you can call yourself a graduate in my house, so many things would have happened. Let me give you an example. After you have studied, normally we try to ask our students to study eight different paths of IFA. In one path, you can have about three, four, five stanzas, and, and that is the path of financial success, the path of compatible spouse, the path of children, the path of victory. Per the, Odu? Yes, oh, the path okay. of travels, the path of longevity, the path of victory over enemies, and so forth. You have to get eight of those things. And then when you want to do the studies, uh, or when you want to do the graduation, we are going to invite a minimum of 16, 17 babalawos nice. from other places. Nice. They will all sit down. Is that how it was before? They used to yes. Go there was a time that we even invited six babalawos from Trinidad and Tobago Beautiful. to come and join us because we wanted to graduate two people. And then we are not going to use a king. They are going to use only Okpele. You will now ask your student, throw that Okpele. If, for example, Obara Oyeku, what does Obara Oyeku say about financial success? You have to recite it. <laughs> After that, we'll tell you, offer the elbow. Then you will offer the elbow. After that, some other people will say, okay, oh, I have a brand new second-hand wife. I want you to tell me what if I had said about this in five years, in 10 years, in 20 years' time. You must be able to recite it. That says that. That's how we are going to do everything, and we are going to cover all the eight steps. After we have covered it, as we are saying it, you must offer that ebo. You must give us the ebo materials. Even if we don't have the ebo materials there, you must give us, and you must tell us the reason why those materials are preferable to some other materials that are alternatives. After you have done that, then we will now tell you, okay, offer that ebo. After offering the ebo, you will now sit down. The 16, 17 babalawos will now take a decision on you. <laughs> Do you think this man is mature enough? This man is knowledgeable enough to go out there to practice. If they say yes, he is, then we are going, you are going to what we consider internship for one year. That is what they are still doing in the diaspora that we don't do much at home again. You see, when somebody is initiated, that person will be wearing white. Or oh, the Iyawo, right? Yes, the, the, for the face of Iyawo, as we call it. Yeah. Don't do that so much. There, yes, you, but you will do it. After one year, you will now come back. When you come back, two things. That is what you have come to show us. What have you achieved within 12 months? The resume. That you have gone. One and two. Do you by any chance have a unique name for yourself? They call me Alicia Kmanawa no ago. That is the name that they call me. It's different from the name that uh, Professor Wandia Bimbala gave me, mm -hmm. Drokogun. And Drokogun means somebody who stands up and recites 20 stanzas. You crouch and recite 30 stanzas. And when you sit down, you recite 50 stanzas. That is the name that Professor Wande Abimbala gave me wow. due to my antecedent. That is what I'm saying. You must have a unique name that you will come up with. And then that unique name will also be debated. 
because the name that you give yourself must be able to stand the test of time at all times. For example, when you look at Ejobi saying that that your elbow cannot touch your chest, that is the name of a babalao. That is what babalao came up with. Can you do it? Oh, no, well, so, I'm not <laughs> so I might means, with you next to me, I might be able to accomplish it. I'm not going to embarrass myself. <laughs> it means that that name will stand the test of time. And it has. And the time. So that is then that is part of the things that will give you the certificate of proficiency. So you've now become an average babalao. But remember that you have a root. That ile will still be where you'll be coming. For example, you can have some challenges. Somebody is having kidney problems. And the person approached you as a babalao. You have tried. You have not been able to get solution. You still have the opportunity of coming back to where you are trained. What do you think we can do? Under this situation. Then we'll be able to tell you, okay, go and do it this way. So you still have that window, that, uh, that door is always open. That support. To you, yes, because we must be able to do it. You cannot fail. If we are still available, you cannot fail. For example, we too may not know it. Then we will approach those who do. This is the problem we are having. What do you think we need to do? Then we'll get there and we'll do it. And sometimes... Even if we don't want to do it that way, we can decide. This particular ailment, my friend, Omonije Adebanji, can I approach him? If he first says, yes. Okay. What type of medicine do I expect from him? Is it the one that is in powder form? Is it the one that is in tea form? Is it the one that... We will find out. And then when we know it, then we'll tell it that your medicine that you do in powder form. That is what we need so that we can use it to cure this person. And then we'll go there and we'll release it. And he may even tell you, no, I don't have it, but I know someone who has it. That is why if I say go to him. Mm. So all of us will go to the person together and we'll get the medicine. And then you transfer it to your mahu. Your mahu becomes more proficient. Yes, sir. That, that's how proficiency comes in. That's why it is not always easy to train with me. Because I have so many people there. And I have proficient babalaos who are in my house, who are working there. They are not my omawu. They are, <coughs> excuse me, they have been trained elsewhere. They only come for more training with me than we have. I think the house is more of like saying a postgraduate school mm -hmm. now than any other thing. Because it is after they have graduated, that's when they come. They will start all over. So uh, I remember one Babala who came with the intention of spending one year with us. Because the Babala had already been trained. But the Babala ended up uh, spending seven years. Because he is also a greedy person like me who <laughs> wants to know everything. Oh, and know. then he realized that he kept sucking him in. So, okay, I will go in uh, next year. Okay, next year I'll go. Okay, no, 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 I still need one more year. He never left. He never left. And he still comes to me Beautiful. on a regular basis. Then we do. So that's the kind, of, uh, the kind of spirit that I think all of us need to use. And the spirit can only come if we remove the idea of competition. There you go. I've noticed the whole time. We, no don't, we don't need competition. It is more in the diaspora here than in the motherland. We need more collaboration. Yes. The reason is, if we want to initiate everybody, we invite people from Mother Italy yes. to join us. Minimum of 16 Babalaos yes. for initiation. And when we want to do it, because it is my son, I will not even do it. I will invite other Babalaos to sit down and do it. From there, you also hear the way they reason in whatever we do that was revealed. And then you see their own style, where it is different, where it is similar. You, you get it because as far as I'm concerned, no matter how different it is, I'm comfortable with it because different does not mean wrong. So those are the things that you can get when you're doing all of this. So that's it.
Oh, that, that's beautiful. And I'd like to take a moment and wish nothing but health and longevity to the Abuise, Juan de Abimbola. I hope one, way, one day we can actually have him on here as well. I remember hearing him speak one time, and I think he spoke of, you know, in, in the times before, some men would have to wait till 40 years of age before they were initiated as Awo. Yes. Now, you know, sometimes you go on Facebook, sometimes you see different things. I, I see sometimes initiation of young men, boys, as Babalawo as well. Um, how do you feel about either of these? Do you think it needs to be so strict where we have to wait so long? Or, you know, how do you feel about the youth? How, what, what age would you like? No, both are good. Mm -hmm. uh, the moment you know what is right from what is wrong, you can be initiated. Okay, so just consciousness. But, but as a Babalawo. If it is a practicing Babalao, my belief is that it's best when you graduate. Correct. To initiate. But sometimes it may not be so because if I may instruct, initiate this person as quickly as possible, especially if there are certain challenges, then you have to do it. And secondly, many of these children, they are the ones that the Babalao will use to initiate others. So you, you cannot walk in Igbo when you are not initiated yourself. Sometimes it makes us to initiate them earlier than what is normally the standard. The, 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 yes, the standard. Uh, but everything is still boiling down to the fact that you need initiated people to walk around you. And you know, then you initiate some other people who are not Babalawa at all. We call them Awa Temaki. They are initiated, but they don't recite a fact. It does not stop them from being babalawo, but they cannot be practicing. If uh, it is not all church members who are reverend, correct? Not, not all of them are, are pastors, and not all Muslims are imams. Right. So that is the kind of things that we are talking about. Yes, they will be there. Some of them even have more knowledge than those of us who practice, because they are not looking at it from the occultic point of view. They are looking at it from the philosophical point of view, from the historical point of view, from spiritist point of view. And their own views are always different from ours. The reason why we initiate into fact, will tell you is just for you to see your destiny. Yes, it is true. You want to know your destiny, that's why you initiate into Ifa. But in their own case, their question is also how? Why? Those are the two questions that they ask that many Babalaos don't ask. The motivation. Yes, how do you understand your destiny? Because after understanding your destiny, what do you do with it? Hmm. Yes, it is because of love. When you get the love, what do you do with the love? <laughs> and why must you understand your destiny? Why must you go into all those things? Why not leave everything to nature? To Ludumari, to unveil at the right time. Those are the questions that you will find them as asking, and those are the questions you also find them answering. Because they are the ones who will start the question and they are the ones who will answer the questions. So it gives you a broader view of what we are doing. So that is what I am saying. Baba, you mentioned that the uninitiated um, are unable to enter the Ibofa as you mentioned there, the, the room of Ifa, yes. correct? Um, what aspects, other than SFA or stanzas of Odu, are they able to study before their initiation? There is no aspect of the Ibo that you cannot study before initiation. Okay. Because that is the whole essence, for you to know, mm -hmm. so that when you are going there, you know what you are going to meet. Okay. It is that element of surprise that people complain about. Mm -hmm. We love surprises. Let us get surprised. Well, you don't get surprised when you are a proficient babalao. <laughs> you, you don't get that kind of surprise. <laughs> because it will happen. You already know it is going to happen. So that surprise will not come anymore. So that is it. Is it common for babalao to work in Orisha initiation? Like if somebody's going to initiate into Shango or Oshun, etc., is it common for babalaos to be present? My own way of looking at it is you don't give or you don't participate in what you don't have. If you are not initiated in any particular aspect of Orisha, you don't need to be there. To be there to do what? You don't have the energy. Let those who have the energy do it. But the practice the, and the problem that I have seen again is that if somebody is initiated into Oshun, the person thinks 
that he can initiate other people into Yemoja, into Ogun, into Shogun, to no. You can only initiate people into Oshun. Because that is the energy that you have. That is what is on your head. No more. But if you want to initiate people into other Orisha that you don't have, then invite somebody who has that particular Orisha on his or her head to be part of it. Then it balances out. That person will be the one to take the initiatives while you can give support. It balances. As a Babala, if you are not initiated into any Orisha, you have no business in Orisha. You have no business there. Is it's, it is it common um, then to see in Nigeria and Risheshe where if we're going to be initiating someone in Yemoja, it's because that person's initiated in Yemoja as well? No, the person may not be initiated into Yemoja. The person may invite somebody who's initiated into Yemoja to do uh, it for you. Okay, so either way. Yes. Okay. I'm not initiated into Oloku, but people had been initiating in Oloku in my house. Yes. We will only invite Oloku devotees mm -hmm. to come and do it. You can initiate into all of these Orisha. There are so many. Oh Lord. But you can invite those who are initiated into it. I'm initiated into 10 different Orisha. Oh, okay. And I'm also into, into, uh, initiated into Oro, which is the 11th one. Bawa, um, with your powers over Yoruba in the language, what does the term Orisha Alabatori mean to you? Orisha Alabatori. Maybe if you write it down. So, something similar is this. I don't know it. So, within the Lukumi practice, it's something that's used to refer to um, the Orisha that we identify as the Orisha that occupies the person's head or that they're ultimately going to be initiated into. Okay. Is this a concept within Isheshe? And if not, where do you think it possibly arose within the Lukumi tradition? Thank you. In Yoruba land, people initiate into Orisha according to the family. The color, so okay. According to the lineage. Mm -hmm. But this issue arose in the diaspora. That is an aspect of Catholicism that is brought into Orisha. That is where you talk of saints. Mm -hmm. The saints governing the head, the stain ruling the shoulders, the stain ruling the knee, the stain ruling the back. <coughs> we don't have such. We don't. All the 401 in Romulus, as a matter of fact, all the 801 in Romulus are affiliated to us. But some are more affiliated than the others. Those who are more affiliated are the ones that we have their hand of Orisha we also initiate into, and those that are relevant to our families, mm -hmm. that are impacted strongly in our families, that is the one that we initiate into. In my own family, it is Orisha Oko, it is Chaogu, it is Oshun, it is Ibeji. We have them, but Orisha Oko first, for all the other Orisha. So you find our children gravitating into Initiating into all of these ones. So, that is so apart from lineage, the Orishas that you ultimately initiate into are the ones that are most strongly affiliated with your Odu. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Baba, the Obas in Nigeria, whether it's the Alafing, the Onife, etc., do they have to be initiated into Ifa before being able to be installed into that royal position? Yes, yes. Now, specifically, as Baba Lawa or into a specific Orisha? Is it multiple ones? Baba, uh, uh, to be initiated into Ifa as Awa Temaki. Not necessarily as practicing Baba Lawa, okay. but as Awu Atemaki. They are initiated, but they don't recite Ifa as Baba Lawa. But there are some towns in Yoruba land that they are initiated into Ifa because they were Baba Lawa's. Because those who founded the town or those who started the town are ah, Babalawos or children of Babalao. For example, when you talk of Alara, you talk of Ajero, you talk of Awanogu, you talk of Wontagi and so forth, they are all children of Onumila and they are all Obas. So you don't, in their own case, when they initiate into Ifa, they initiate into what they found in their lineage mm -hmm. because that is what is in the lineage anyway. So that's what they initiated into. We find uh, many of them like that. Thank you for clarifying, Bawa. 
you, you know, throughout this interview, we've spoken about how important it is for the Awol to have an effect on his community, a positive effect, help people. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the greatest legacies you have is your literature, right? Mm -hmm. Especially the book that we have in front of us that's so popular, Ikun Lea Biamo. What motivated you to write this book, Baba? Yes. Um, there is a concept in Yoruba land called Ikun Lea Biamo. And that's what I, the Asher of motherhood. That is what makes a mother different from a woman. A mother is higher than a woman. Then what are the things that you have? Because he first says that after Olodumari, it is the mother. What does it mean? What is it that gives the mother that power over even the Orishas? Then what? And that is that ashe. That is what gives the mother. Because in a joke, he first says that if all the 401 Iromoles are against you and your mother is genuinely in your support, none of them will be able to do anything. Because Olodumare will uphold the mother. And that's why we say Egungu Lagbalutufe. Egungu is the highest of all the Orishas and the Rumole. Because without a Gungu, none of us would be here. Yes. Yeah. So for that reason, your mother will eventually become your Gungu. So it means that she still has that power. So that then what gives the mother that energy? It is Ikunle Abiyamo. And that's why people use Ikunle Abiyamo as prayer points. Because when you see, your mother will call you, my son. I am appealing to you with the Asher of motherhood, with Ikule Abiyamo. Please don't do this. Sometimes I am appealing to you with the Asher of but and I am praying for you with that Asher. It shall be well with you. I assure you it will be well with you. Because of that, Ikule Abiyamo. Then the next thing is for me to sit down and decide. How do we get that ashe? How do our parents, the, the mothers, how do they get that ashe? That is the reason why that book was written. So that you will see all the steps that you need to take in order to have that ashe. As I've studied Ifan, I'm sure as we all have, in every Odu that you penetrate into, childbirth is a huge goal. You know, there's always multiple verses on being able to procreate. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a very huge point within this culture. In your lifetime, have you noticed that infertility has become an issue in Nigeria? Okay, let me tell you something. Ifa is based entirely on the principle of multiplication. You have to multiply. And that's what Udibeji had said. It is the male genitalia and the female genitalia that must come together in order to produce a baby. And it also means that a man and a woman must cooperate in order to progress. Nowadays, I believe that there was never a time that child was not an issue. But because we know what to do, to remove that problem, and that's what I am saying. That is the whole essence of FIFA. It is based on principle of substitution. R give something to FIFA in order to achieve something. If there is problem of procreation, then you know what to do in in order to heal that person so that there will be procreation. Baba, I would say. Um you know, it's a great moment to bring over a personal experience of how your literature affected my own life. Mm -hmm. When I first got initiated as Baba Lawo, going on seven years ago now, I remember the first gift I received was a copy of Ifadida, right? Mm -hmm. One of the most impactful pieces mm -hmm. of literature my eyes have ever mm -hmm. gazed. Mm -hmm. And um, after I initiated as Awo, I met a wonderful woman, right? My mm -hmm. wife. And, um, you know, time went on. We got to know each other and we realized we wanted to create a family. Um, unfortunately, we faced um, issues of infertility, mm -hmm. right? And her odu is obe trupon. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking at the literature and just realizing, you know, how could someone with this odu, how could we be facing these obstacles when it speaks so much about everything that is what this book speaks of, mm -hmm. right? 
And I remember there's a verse there. I can't remember the number uh, because they're all so you know easy to get into. But it, it spoke of a woman named Elewa, and Elewa. <laughs> and this woman um, was unable to procreate, and she was with the man of her dreams. So imagine it was talking about me, right? Yes. <laughs> and um, the re the way she was able to procreate was by performing a bow. That's right. Uh, with a she goat, and I remember you know it, it involves a, a heart. Placed yeah, on top of the ifa, yeah. <laughs> and it literally said in the book, it is guaranteed yes. that this woman will become pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, and this is after literally medical professionals told us give up. Mm -hmm. Imagine the trauma. Um, I performed the ibo, and I remember one day just looking at Orumila and, and saying, "Please." And a month later, my wife. She comes, and she comes screaming as if somebody had died. I was like, oh, my God, with this much emotion, something negative happened. And she screamed at the top of her lungs, we're pregnant. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And I remember the most important part of that ebo is when you're able to conceive. You kneel in front of Ifa, you offer obi, yes. and you say, Orumila, thank you. Mm -hmm. So the same way I said thank you to Orumila that day, I say thank you to you, Baba. You're welcome. For educating us, for providing mm -hmm. us with that literature, mm -hmm. and for giving hope. Right, you fulfilled mm -hmm. in so many ways. Um, so many other books, you know, Omolua B as well. You know, so many classics. What is your creative process like when you're getting like how many people are working on these things? We know that you're able to accomplish quite a bit, but how how, how are we doing it with you know this schedule? Us keeping you up for twelve hours. How are we able to do it? Well, when I think I write books when I am at my mischievous best, <laughs> <laughs> that is when I write books. Especially when I have a little small mischief that I want to pass to the world. Nice. Uh, yes. So you don't know that you need to study this. I will force you to study it. And then I'll start to write. And this, my brother, Fakunle uh, Oyesanya, he is the other side of my mischief. Nice. Because I, the moment I tell him, look, I'm thinking of something, he's also thinking of that. He's ready thing. to go. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll start to oh, man. put things together. Yes, I, I write when I want to make people, when I want to force people to put on their thinking caps. That is when I write. And then after writing, I give it out. I immediately I finish it, I pass it to him. Go and publish it. And oh man, another partner in crime, another oh, another yes. accessory. This one. <laughs> oh, and then so innocent uh, looking. Yeah. Ah, oh, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> he is a troublemaker, <laughs> and he will be the one to do most of the editing. Oh God. And then the book will be out. Mm. Abola, yeah. what role has Baba played in your life? Ooh, I mean, he's uh, like I told him today. He's like a second father. Yeah. So it's uh, a big role, a big big role. Uh, I'm not going to cry, I promise. It's emotional stuff. <laughs> it's emotional. Um, he's it, definitely played a big, giant role. Um, I mean, basically, it's, uh, yeah, second father, second father. Um, and his family is my family, his kids. Uh, it, it's funny, I go back to... Um, my my mother told me a long time ago, she was like, when I wanted to, when I was trying to figure out, like, what am I going to be when I grow up, yeah. right? I remember her one day saying, I always wanted you to be a priest. I hear that. I heard that too, yeah. But we were Catholic. Oh, man, there's restrictions. <laughs> there's a lot of restrictions. So that. I was like, yeah. um, I want to have kids. And I always knew I wanted to have kids, so I was like, yes, Mom, sir. that's not happening. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... It's funny because I did become eventually, I'm in a priesthood, I'm studying, I'm not graduated yet, but that's something that I have in mind. So it's, um, Chiefs definitely played that main professor, father role, uh, trainer role for me, uh, and that I've been basically, whatever he passes on to me, I've kind of been doing the same thing to other people. So I've, I've kind of, through him, even though I'm casting and doing Ebo and everything all the time, uh, one of my major uh, loves is basically to teach what he has taught me. So there's a, a huge group of people, and I wouldn't say many of these Ebo's that I train myself 
are better than me. That's the idea. Um, yeah, and, the and, idea. and it's great. I see them like flourishing. I'm like, oh, wow, this is great. Um, and so I've seen my role through him as, as continuing to be an educator. Uh, and I think I'll always be that type of person. And it brings a lot of joy to me to see these uh, young guys, some guys about my age, but flourishing in Ifa and really growing uh, and taking what I gave to them, which was passed to me from Chief. Um, so he's definitely paid, uh, played a big role in my life, but also these other people that are, are branching so many, out. Without even meeting them. Yeah. You know, I love them before I met them. Yeah. Because that's the effect he has through this literature or even when mm -hmm. you just look at all the countless videos, um, you, you get this essence. My wife, you know, God bless her. She said, there's something about that man. His energy, his patience, mm -hmm. um, it, it's pure. You know? yeah. now, I, have to, I have to ask you now, what role has Abola played in your life? Before I knew Abola, I knew I was going to be great. How, I don't know. But I just knew I was going to be great because anything that I start, I always aim for the highest and the best. How I will get there, I don't know. Then when I met this rascal, he ended up putting me beyond the level that I thought I would ever be. And that is why I know he is my first child. My children consider him my first child. There is nothing my children want do that they will exclude him because they know the role that he had played. So that is the role that he had played in my life. He is the one who amplified me. He is the one who put me over there for people to see. And he is also the one who put me into trouble more than any of my other of my own. Good trouble. That is Good very trouble. true. He is very always true. putting me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sincerely hope that this interview, apart from all the other things that we've accomplished today, is going to show the kind of relationship that the Oluo, the Babaifa, can have on the Omoawo, and how necessary this is in a time where so many people are misguided or have no guide at all. Um, gentlemen, a um, couple things that we want to touch on before we bring a conclusion to this fabulous interaction. Where can people find Baba's literature? So um, I used to be the one that published and edited all the books. I, I passed it on to a, a good friend of mine who, who was also part of our, our family, uh, religious family. Um, His name? Ifajuan, a.k.a. Derek Webb. Oh, shout out to Derek. <laughs> He's in uh, Los Angeles, California. He, uh, he re basically renovated the old website, made a new one. So it's ifalinks.com. Beautiful. Ifalinks.com. Uh, all the books are there, English and Spanish. You can get the digital. You can order the physical copies there. Um, there's all the, the, I call them the core series. There's these yellow books, about five or six of them. Ikun Abiyamo, Omoluabi, Divine Possibilities, the 101 Ifa Medicines and Remedies. They're all on there. Um, well, there's also a, a YouTube channel that I created. Please, please mention it, please. Um, the, you just go on YouTube and look up Solagba de Popola and the, you, the, all the videos will come out and the channels there, there's about 32 videos on there on, is it under Jose Rodriguez? Is yeah, you'll see name my name right now, but if you put his name in there and then my name come out, beautiful. That way we get some subscribers. Definitely. And you know? so there's a lot of good educational videos on oh everything. My gosh. Yeah. I've been binging everything. them. Tell me about everything. <laughs> um, so we put some videos on the website that you can buy, but we decided to put a lot for free so that everybody had some access to something. Sure. Um, because that's the one thing we, we wanted to make sure, like, you know, we wanted to have some funds for him to have and, and money to be able to take back. Of course. But also think about we still want to educate and not everybody's able to give for certain things or knowledge. So let's put a bunch of stuff on YouTube that people have access to also. And I also want to make a mention that at Botanica Candles and more, we're getting organized to be able to carry your books and distribute them officially so that you get the credits and funds that you deserve for educating us, you know, making sure they're going through the right paths and uh, roads to be able to get this literature right. A mm -hmm. um, couple final points. Um, Baba, would you like to leave the world with any words, you know, to end this, uh, this interview? You know, any, any last thoughts, you know, for the people that are going to be watching this? You know? Yeah, like I always say, uh, 
go there and find the truth. And the truth will expand you. The truth will actualize you. It will make you who you are supposed to be. And like we said, the truth is Ifa. Go there and find out. And then you'll see. And whatever it is that is agitating our minds, all what we need to know is that it is transient. It is temporary. Mm -hmm. It will go. Tough days will go. And when it goes, it will bring the period of peace and harmony. So let us continue to look for peace and harmony. And whatever you are going to do that will increase peace and harmony on earth, do it. Thank you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for turning, tuning into Our Roots podcast, only where the strongest roots see the light with Joseph Abayifa. If you haven't had the opportunity, please be sure to subscribe and share this video. Uh, BotanicaCandlesAndMore.com is up and running, just like IfaLinks.com is up and running. And from all of us here, Chief, Abola, all of the people, Ulises, thank you so much for your home, Aboru. And uh, Aboru Aboye to everyone. Thank you so much. Boy, May Fab bless us all. Bless you.